treatment strategies to improve outcomes in high-risk follicular lymphoma are certainly needed. Bortezomib is a standard of care therapy in multiple myeloma. What about in the setting of follicular lymphoma? So we're going to talk about that, the effect of bortezomib in complete remission. And this happens to be, by the way, a uh, trial from the ECOG Akron people from the Cancer Research Group. And I'm with Dr. Andrew Evans, who is a professor in chief of the Division of Hematology and Oncology at Tufts University School of Medicine and the director of the Tufts Cancer Center there. This is an interesting agent. So first off, let's talk a little bit about the uh, bortezomib, in, in, as, which is standard of care in one position. position what makes you think it's going to work here? Yeah, there were some preliminary data back at the time when we designed this study in 2008 that there was a signal in follicular lymphoma. There was data in relapse refractory follicular lymphoma that showed it was maybe not a home run, but there was definitely some clinical activity. So here at this meeting, you're presenting, it's a randomized phase two trial, right? Randomized phase two. Uh, phase two, and this is, uh, on. you're also looking at it on top of what you wanted to see whether lenalidomide improves remission duration when added to maintenance. So let's back up before we go there and just find out what did you, what did you determine? What it's a wordy title, it really, <laughs> it really is a tongue tire. But so when we, again, back in 2008, we were assessing the landscape of untreated patients with high tumor burden follicular lymphoma, and that's a big differentiator. It's not patients who are asymptomatic, but patients who need treatment. And so we looked at it and we know a semi-standard is some induction therapy with rituximab and chemotherapy. That's phase one. And then a second phase is what's called maintenance or some people consolidation. So what we really said is, can we have a study that maybe looks at both? So it's a randomized phase two study that interestingly in 2007 and eight, we originally had rituximab CHOP as a standard arm, but as we were going through the approval process, the bendamustine rituximab data came out showing that it was at least as effective and probably less toxic. So we had to go back to the NCI, change that out, and then that became our standard arm, bendamustine rituximab, in two years of then maintenance rituximab. So then our first question was, how can we make the induction better? And at least with the collection of agents available at that time in 07, 08, and 09, Bortism, it was one that there was data with bortiz I'm sorry, with bendamustine uh, and bortezomib and rituximab in the relapse refractory setting. And given that signal, we said that we think that makes sense. And then the lenalidomide, partly since it's an oral agent, we said, well, that might make some good sense for longer therapy, not just six months, maybe a year. But we actually use the word continuation in this trial because it's not really when we think of maintenance, it's a really low dose therapy, but it's actually 20 milligrams with, with, in combination with rituximab is a full dose. So for, the, for that arm, for the first year of the two years of rituxan, we're giving lenalidomide. But at ASH, this is the very first look at this randomized phase two trial. So we don't have all the data back on the continuation part. So it's just looking at the bortezomib induction part. And what did you find? So yeah, we, so the, pri well, uh, the primary endpoint of that first part was complete remission rates. And we're always looking for what we call surrogates. I mean, I would say the most important endpoint in indolent lymphoma, which we know is treatable but not curable, is can we change the natural history? In other words, can we improve overall survival? So that takes a long time to follow. So is there a way we can follow, find a surrogate? And there's not a perfect one, but some, there's been some data published that complete remission rate might be a surrogate. So we looked to see, can we improve the complete remission rate by adding bortezomib to bendamustine rituximab? And the, the short answer is it, it hit the, the mark for what it's worth. We set a mark at a 16% improvement in absolute improvement in CR rates. And for all patients, when we looked at that comparison of BR versus BVR, with the V being Velcade or bortezomib, it was 18% percentage points better on CR rate. You didn't even have the lidamide in the title, so I'm reading the abstract and right. going, wow, then you throw that in. What I thought was interesting is here at ASCO, lidamide maintenance therapy was shown to improve overall survival for patients with multiple myeloma. Yes. So, which I thought was one of the stories yep. out of this meeting. So it, it's encouraging that yeah. you're looking at this yeah. and you should be kind of optimistic. We are optimistic, I think. And then we also looked at a subgroup called the FLIPI, which is a high-risk FLIPI. And in those patients, it was even a 23 percentage po point better. But still, the bottom line is going to wow. be, does that CR rate 
right. confer a survival advantage, progression for you overall. And we're hoping we'll get an early look this summer. We're, I'm pushing the ECOG statisticians to get us data for the ASH deadline. So hopefully we'll have some of that, that initial data. What we're also really excited about, we were really uh, happy to work with ECOG and the companies to put together a lot of scientific studies. So we collected a lot of the tissue and bone marrow and blood because what we always talk about is, can we find a biomarker that's predictive for whatever therapy to work? So there's a lot of science. We're talking about doing sequencing and uh, minimal residual disease or cDNA. Uh, we're looking at PET scanning, quantitative, qualitative, of course, quality of life. So we're really excited about all the science that's layered into this clinical trial as well. Actually, we didn't even talk about safety issue. Uh, that's important. You have yeah. to look at that. And I think there were some earlier studies that showed maybe there are some concerns, and not to say it was uh, placebo or no side effects, but it was really well tolerated. You know, w one thing, though, we were very uh, cautious, I would say, in that we mandated antiviral treatment. That's the use of Elcade and bendamustine rituximab. Right. So I think that mitigated partly the viral infections. So. There was the one thing we did see, which is not surprising, is an increase in sensory neuropathy, which you can see with Velcade. Although we started the study with IV Velcade or bortezomib, once we switched to subcutaneous, that rate of grade three neuropathy went from 16% down to two to 3%. So not right. zero, right. and we still have to watch that, but it really was abrogated. And there was no difference in response rate when we went from IV to sub-Q bortezomib. That was another important point. So we may be talking again at the ASH meeting. I hope so. Good, I like that. We have here from ASCO 2016 a variety of uh, stories that are online and in print. Please check those out for American Medical Communications. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.